I bet that you haven't been using the paintbrush tool in Adobe Animate to its fullest potential because it really is quite powerful. Let's talk about that. Tip tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut and welcome to another Adobe Animate tutorial. As you can see today we're taking a look at the paintbrush tool and how we can use it in a variety of scenarios to create some really quick, really simple but really powerful animations. For example, I have here a man with a <laughs> severed arm, a cat with a severed tail and a spear. Now each of these are going to be animated using the paintbrush tool with a single drawing which is incredibly uh, obviously great for time saving purposes. So let's just jump right into it. Now I've separated out all of these into their own symbols just for simplicity's sake. So inside the man symbol here, for example, you can see we just have three layers. We have our guide layer on which I've drawn this um, rough, just single line for the way that I want the arm to move. We have the body layer, which is just a symbol that I've animated to just rock back and forth. And we have an arm layer on which is just a simple brush stroke arm. So I've taken my normal brush tool and I've drawn myself an arm, you know, and I've filled it in and that's it. That's all we've got. So this is normal brush artwork. Now we're going to use the paintbrush tool to create this into a drawing object that we can bend and manipulate at will. OK, so I'm just going to select my arm, right click it and choose create paintbrush. Now, the original preview is going to look quite terrible. We need to change some of these settings to make it work for us specifically. Now, we definitely want it to be an art brush, but I'm going to name it man arm just for, um, you know, library sake. And we would like it, you'd think, to stretch proportionally. But you can see here that we have this arrow, which is the direction of the brush stroke that we're going to make. You want to make sure that that arrow is following from the base of the arm to the tip of the fingers, like so. But if we were to leave it on scale proportionally, I'll show you what happens. If I now go to my paintbrush tool and I make sure that over here in my style, I have my arm selected, I can draw a wiggly line and it's going to scale up my arm proportionally to the length of the line. I now we have a very thick distorted arm. If I draw just a little line, we're going to have a tiny little arm like that, which obviously is not what we want. So we're going to go back to our paintbrush tool. We're going to click on the three dots here and we're going to choose edit stroke style. And we're going to make it stretch, uh, not to fit stroke length, because that's going to make the arm thinner. We want stretch between guides. Now, at first glance, this doesn't look any different. What it allows you to do is drag these guides in and out to tell the program where you want your stretching to start and stop. For example, I'd like this arm to stretch as much as possible, but I don't want the hand to distort in any way. I want the hand to remain perfectly the same size. So I'm just going to drag this guide until it just goes over the wrist like so. OK, final step is I'm going to choose my overlap mode and I'm just going to make sure that it adjusts corners and folds to prevent overlap, which can prevent some of these little glitches that you sometimes see. Let's apply it to the existing stroke and update the brush. I need to increase my stroke size to a relevant size around, say, 56, I think will work well. And we have a perfectly drawn arm that is always going to have a hand that is the right size, no, no matter what we do to the actual arm itself. So you can see already this is incredibly powerful. OK, so what we're going to do is just hide this arm. We're going to drag the guide layer back on top. We'll add a new layer on top, which we will call arm and we'll call this paintbrush just so we can see the difference. Let's go to frame by frame animation, keyframe every other frame. And using my guide layer, we can just paint in our arm like so. OK, now what we can do once you've made that is it creates a drawing object, which means I can double click inside this object, a bit like a symbol, and I can still manipulate and edit this individual drawing shape if I need to. Benefit of this is, of course, that at the moment his hand is going to be in the same pose this entire time. But if you wanted to come back through and edit the way his hand looks, you can. So let me just now using my guidelines and my onion skin, I'm just going to go through very quickly. And I'm going to draw my character's arm. Now, I'm going to rush this just to show you how quickly you can do it. Usually I take obviously a bit more care. But I don't really want to fast forward this segment because the whole point is that it's quick and you can see you can bend the arm in any direction that you want. You can reposition the arm. You can scale it up. You can rotate it if needs be to get, you know, the exact angle that you want. So it's like working with a combination symbol and brush stroke at the same time with the added benefit of having completely bendable, manipulatable, uh, but consistent styles on your brush strokes. It's essentially 
a very complicated brush stroke that you're doing here in terms of what information you can lock away into that actual stroke. Okay, so we'll just quickly finish this up and this will obviously be slightly rough because I am rushing this. You would take the time in your animations to make sure that it is absolutely bloody perfect. So let's take a look at it outside of our symbol with the loop turned on. Bam. There you go, we have a completely bendable line. Obviously a little bit jittery because I've rushed through it, but you get the picture, okay? Let's do another example then using our cat's tail here, for example. Now inside this uh, cat symbol, we just have him breathing, body going up and down, and we have a waving tail animation, which you can see if I hide the original tail layer. Um, which is here, you can see that we have this wave principle thing going on. Okay, so we will take our tail layer, right click, create paintbrush. Again, it's messed up a little bit. So this time we're going to choose stretch between guides and we'll choose uh, this kind of upwards direction because we want to draw from the tip of the tail. So we'll draw from the tip of the tail down and we will stop the tail tip from stretching pretty much exactly the same as the last one apart from the, the other way around. So we'll call this one tail. Make sure overlaps don't break it. Uh, let's hide that and we'll do a new layer called tail paintbrush. And we'll turn this layer to a guide. Okay, give ourselves some keyframes. Boom. Now, the benefit of this being as simple as I can trace this line. And I know for a fact that this tail's width is going to be absolutely consistent. If I go and try and draw a consistent tail width, on a wave principle, I can probably get something pretty close, but there will be points where, especially if I'm drawing it frame after frame after frame, that, that tail is going to get all sorts of wobbly. And if you don't, you know, if you can get away with not doing that, then that is fantastic. The best thing to do in scenarios like this is to ensure that you have a good guideline to start from. Okay, if I'd rushed these guidelines or if I'd tried to do this without guidelines. As you can see from the brush preview, this kind of red thickness indicator preview, the preview itself isn't great. So if you were gonna try and do this without guidelines, you're gonna run into some trouble. But how long does it take to draw a quick guideline versus how long does it take to draw a detailed rough, essentially, for every single one of these frames? You need to make sure that the thickness is consistent. You need to make sure that the tip of the tail doesn't jump around too much. You need to make sure that the length of the tail doesn't change. Alternatively, you use the paintbrush tool, you draw a single line guide, and less than a minute later, you have a waving tail option there. Now you can see that sometimes you get a little bit of a glitch. You can see on this frame, for example, here, for some reason, the tip of the tail is gone. I have no idea why this happens, but all that means is I've just got to delete this one single frame, come back in with my paintbrush tool, and draw it again, okay? And there we have our cat's waving tail. Awesome, let's pop out of our symbol and take a look. So we've now got a waving up man, a waving tail on the cat here. And the last step is to do this spear. So inside this spear, you can see that I've got a spear that's going to scale up, land in the ground and flop about. Once again, pretty rushed animation because I'm just doing it for this tutorial, but you get the picture. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Let's take our spear, let's right click it and create a paintbrush. Now for this one, let's try scale proportionally. And let's make sure that we can draw from the base of the spear through to the tip, okay? Now, the benefit of doing um, scale proportionately is that you don't have to choose a brush thickness because it takes its thickness from the length of the line. So for example, here, I could scale this up all the way. And if I drew two consistent lines at a potentially different width, that's not going to affect the brush at all, okay? So this is now a redundant property. What this does mean is, I can push, I can pull, I can bend after making the strokes, I can tweak, bloody fantastic, so powerful. Let's call this one spear, and we'll call this one spear paintbrush. Very important to label your layers. Let's turn that into a guide, give ourselves some keyframes, and let's take a look. So here, if we are very clever, we can make it so that our spear, as it gets longer, looks like it is actually flying in from the distance. Now, what I like to do is actually reduce the size of this stroke width, even though it doesn't matter, purely because 
it affects the size of my preview line, which makes it much easier to see just what the hell I'm doing, <laughs> frankly. So let's zoom out now that we've got this extra space. It's going to stretch before it hits the ground. And then it's going to start to wobble. And because our lines are consistent in height, our spear is going to be consistent in width. Very rushed animation once again. Apologize for that. But here we go. We now have a spear coming in from the distance with a single drawing, which is incredible. So let's turn on that loop and take a look. That's pretty much all I wanted to show you. There is obviously so much more you can do with this. And if you take a bit more time, you can make it look a bit more beautiful as well. But I just wanted to show you how powerful this technique can be, especially when you can manipulate and redraw and tweak these shapes as if they were brush strokes. Fantastic. Really great tool. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, etc. If you're having trouble with Adobe Animate, I have an intro to Adobe Animate course that I have made on Bloop Animation. It is 60 bucks. The link is in the description and it is lifetime access with 30 day back money guarantee. If you don't like it, you don't pay for it, which is great. So click that link if you are wanting to learn more about Adobe Animate. Otherwise, thank you very much and I'll see you next time for another episode of Tipta. Massive thank you to my level two and above members, WN62, Ian Costello, Rob V, Error Encountered, MP, Art Viz, Love, Melon, Hoover, Josh C, Ursula Fimanska, The Saucier, Lully Lululo X, Andrew Hammond, Jenna Curry, Jobs Animations, Ranaka N, Narain Madilla, Barbara Reznor, Lone Wolf 16, Iridine, Maybe Sharma, Kevin Murphy, Mariam Devard, Jeremy Stewart, Lonely to Cook, Valor Ashcraft, Red X Superior, and Crust. You guys are super lovely people, and I really love you. Wow, WN62, nine months already. Thank you so much for being my longest standing member. If you guys want to get some exclusive membership perks, just click that join button below. for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.